To some eight million people, this island in the Hudson River is home. They work here, they play here. They eat and sleep, laugh and cry time on a projection of land that is called Manhattan. It's distinguished from other cities principally by size and scope of influence, taller buildings and longer shadows, the lofty hopes of greatness the irresistible lure of fame. It's a dazzling city, the greatest city in the world, teeming with a frenzied pace. The very air bristling with excitement, the sights and sounds of millions of people on the go. The quickened step generated by the young and the bold. The bright and the eager on the way up. Tempered by the heartbreak of men and women on the way down. And the countless multitude looking for something to scatter the doubts and fears that cloud their minds. It's a city of perpetual hope. For to its present millions, it adds hundreds more each day. Thousands more each week. Young girls from the Middle West, from Iowa and Kansas, their dreams intact in a suitcase and a smile. Young men from Texas and couples from Tennessee, nourishing hopes and ambitions that only New York can quench. Five million of them are anticipated in the next 15 years. And visitors, 14 million of them annually, businessmen and tourists, transients and traders drawn to the big city. A city where the Church of Our Lord is planning soon to construct their very first building. Physical night is not the only darkness here. There is deep and aching hunger for the Word of God. This is Manhattan. This is the setting for the Manhattan Project. person who has never lived in New York may think of it primarily as a business center. He might believe, for example, that this row of 12-story buildings is a line of commercial houses. However, this is a shot of New York's desirable east side residential section. All these buildings are residences. Every window is someone's living room. Manhattan Church of Christ is in the very center of this vast residential area. The people who live here are very much like people everywhere. They sit in the park if they can find a seat. They love to shop. Playing is a little more difficult, but it can be done. True, there are more things to see and do, intensified by more people seeing and doing them, but native and transplanted New Yorkers alike face the same problems and have the same deep spiritual needs common to all men everywhere. There is as much loneliness and need among the skyscrapers as there is on a solitary farm in Oklahoma. Seven million commuters shuttle back and forth from the suburbs every day to work in Manhattan's great industrial, commercial, and business centers. It's impossible to house this many people on one little island. However, there are two million people who live in Manhattan. More than live in the states of Arizona, Montana, and North Carolina all combined. To the people who live in Manhattan, it is home. 
Life here is basically like it is everywhere. In a unique sense, Manhattan is the capital of the whole world. Delegations from all the member states of the United Nations live in Manhattan. Where in all the world does so small an area encompass people from every nation under heaven? A complex of backgrounds, languages and customs melded into the far-reaching sway of the world's principal publishing houses. The television and radio centers and the communications hub of the nation. The universities and colleges, the newspapers and theaters, the banks, corporations and industries, and the many centers of religious influence in the largest capital of denominations in North America. Manhattan cast lengthening shadows across the land and at the base of these shadows are eight million people whose number increases daily to include many of your sons and daughters and closest friends. Within the next 15 years, New York is expected to increase its population by another five to 10 million people. Population trends indicate that the majority of this influx will come from the South and Southwest. By a conservative estimate, at least 50,000 of these will be members of Churches of Christ. Where will they go and what will they do? The city of New York has never been lacking in either attractions or activities. And a young girl arriving from the Southwest, say, in the not too distant future, will find that indeed, Manhattan is a city of rare and wondrous sights, and a city of opportunity and excitement, but a bewildering place at times, and a place where above all else, friends and people who feel the same way you do, are your most prized earthly possessions. She'll very likely share an apartment with other girls, and finding a job isn't too difficult. The city welcomes the bright, the young, and the talented, and chances are she'll feel like Alice in Wonderland when she walks among the most famous landmarks in the world, on the celebrated streets where the giants of the theater and music and the arts have left their indelible mark. Before long, she'll meet other people of her own age with similar interests and backgrounds, and she'll enjoy these special occasions of eating at famous restaurants and visiting famous places. And leisure hours filled with rewarding visits to the largest and finest museums and galleries in America. No other city in the world provides such a vast assortment of cultural and historical attractions as Manhattan. And its dazzling world is hers to see and enjoy. Metropolitan Museum of Natural History, Rockefeller Center, Times Square, the Statue of Liberty, and Central Park. Her exciting new life in New York has just about everything a girl could ask for, except, except on Sunday. Back home, she attended the Church of Christ faithfully. Here, she tries to continue her regular and devoted church attendance but the church on East 80th Street meets in an old converted residence with services in an unventilated, overcrowded, upstairs, split-level walk-up room. The baptistry is in a coal cellar. Bible classes meet in an old butler's pantry. A kitchen, two or three bedrooms, and a couple of offices. There is no window and no ventilation in the nursery. How tragic that facilities available to the Church of Christ in New York should be so inadequate. A little tiny box-like chapel in an upstairs room, surely something better than this should represent the truth in a place like Manhattan. The hymns of praise are mingled with silent prayers that more souls can be brought into the Lord's church. But how can this be? 
the unattractive physical plant acts as a depressant and discouragement to all who enter it. And if they overcome this, there still isn't enough room. Manhattan's auditorium, even with only one aisle, could not possibly seat 150 adults. Disappointedly, many turn away. Some believers become discouraged and frustrated and fear that any effort to bring truth to those who do not know it, any attempt to evangelize the largest American city is doomed to ultimate failure. Within the next decade, some 50,000 members of the Church of Christ are anticipated in Manhattan alone, and the present church building on 80th Street can accommodate only a handful. The elders of the Manhattan Church of Christ and Brother Burton Kaufman, the missionary to Manhattan and minister of the church, have not been daunted by this formidable challenge. Their vision encompasses a strong Church of Christ in the heart of New York, accessible to millions of people, where untold multitudes could truly come to know the Lord in his church. Six years ago, the project got underway to erect the first church building on Madison Avenue since the 19th century. Prayerfully, prodigiously, they set about to make this dream come true. But this is a task no mere handful of people, however faithful, can accomplish alone. Unless thousands of Christians everywhere move quickly and effectively to seize the wonderful opportunities in Manhattan, the dreams and hopes for the cause of Christ in New York will fade and perish. Remember this. Although over 1,100 churches and thousands of individuals have already sent money to meet the challenge in Manhattan, although a wonderful site is bought and paid for, the church still meets in the tiny, restricted, inadequate upstairs room. This bottleneck must be broken. The churches of Christ must meet this challenge or resign themselves to a minor role of influence in New York City. In many respects, the mission in Manhattan is the most significant single step in the history of the church of this century. Just as the apostles went into all the world, they first moved to establish the truth in great world centers. Today, viewing the largest and most influential city in the Western Hemisphere, 20th century disciples of Christ have no less a challenge than Christians of 1900 years ago. Seven billion dollars of tax-free property in Manhattan alone gives some idea of the religious investment already here. New Testament Christianity must meet the challenge of moving ahead or admitting that in New York, it was an experiment that failed. The main street of Manhattan is Madison Avenue. Every week, a million people pass by the corner of Madison Avenue and 80th Street, one of the most strategic locations in this city. In the heart of Manhattan, on its main street, in one of the most heavily populated areas on earth, a new Church of Christ will rise as a commanding edifice, the first church building on Madison Avenue in the 20th century, announcing to the world that churches of Christ are on the move and that New Testament Christianity is a living force in the lifeblood of America's largest metropolis. But why, some ask, why here? in one of the busiest sections of town, where the price of land is high. Why not out on the edge of the island somewhere, or in an area where property might be cheaper? The answer to this question is simple and self-evident. There is no inexpensive way to establish the church on the island of Manhattan. Outlying edges of the island were long ago preempted for piers, bridge approaches, and municipal development. They're not available at any price. The proposed location is in the center of one of the largest residential areas in the world, and on the city's main street, one of the most traveled arteries in America. The location is ideal. A million dollars could not buy a better location. 
10% of Manhattan's members live within 600 feet of the corner where the new building will rise. And on Madison Avenue, the Manhattan Church of Christ will be readily accessible to students of 28 major universities on the island, including Columbia University and New York University, the largest school in the world. The proposed edifice will not be a cathedral. No money will be squandered on needless decorations. It will be beautiful and will provide the maximum space and utility with a minimum expenditure. It will reflect the genius of some of the greatest architects in the world today. The same men who designed the Jefferson Memorial in Washington and Canada House on Fifth Avenue, New York. It will be simple, all right, but simply beautiful. All who have helped to erect it will be rightfully proud of it. Manhattan's capable, faithful eldership has every reason to give thanks for what has already been accomplished. Even with inadequate facilities, there have been a hundred additions to the church each year for the past seven years. But the challenge here is bigger than one church building. Manhattan should have a hundred churches of Christ. But before this can ever be, there must be one strong and faithful church able to set the example. This can never be unless there is a building large enough to serve as the center for such a congregation. The challenge is worldwide in scope and projected over a span of years. But it is a challenge which can never be met adequately until a strong and united brotherhood has firmly established the gospel at the center of world influence. Until a powerful church stands firmly and resolutely in the heart of the world's greatest city. Just as the Apostle Paul would not and could not be satisfied to settle in Puteoli if the Christian religion was to survive, the Church of Christ cannot be resigned to settle only along the byways of America when the mandate of the gospel is to preach the truth to all the world. The crossroads of the world converge at Manhattan. Here is the missionary to Manhattan, the minister of the Manhattan Church of Christ, Brother Burton Kaufman. First, we in Manhattan wish to thank a thousand churches of Christ and many thousand individuals who have already aided the Manhattan Project with their prayers, their encouragement, and their money. We have not worked alone. We have been blessed immeasurably. We thank God for our brethren and continue to ask God's blessing as we now move to finish this giant task in the big city. We pray that you will continue to aid and support us now more than ever before. And now, the Lord willing, we shall proceed to construct the building for which we have worked and prayed such a long time. And what kind of building will it be? It will be a 16-story apartment building with the church facilities constructed in the bottom 25% of the building. Residents cooperative apartments above the church's portion will be sold, deeded to the people who buy them, thus getting the church completely out of the real estate phase of this program. This proposed building will cost $2,300,000. Even after the apartments are sold, we will still have to raise $750,000 in order to build. Of course, this is far less than would have to be raised for any other type building. This type of building was chosen by the Manhattan elders because this is the most economical way to do this job. Our problem then comes down to this. How shall we raise $750,000? Manhattan congregation herself will raise a third of it, $250,000, a thousand dollars each for every member. Of course, this will necessitate heavy borrowing. The balance of $500,000 must be raised from churches and Christians throughout the nation. Now, can this be done? Certainly. 100 congregations giving $2,500 each and 2,500 individuals giving $100 each can raise the entire $500,000 needed. 
To be sure, some may be able to give less or more, but in round figures, this is what it will take to do the job. Each and every gift, large or small, will help. Every drop in the bucket counts. Remember, your participation in this is far more important than the mere size of your gift. If each and every individual and a congregation receiving this appeal will only do what is easily possible and what can be well afforded, a wonderful victory for the Lord's cause can be won. This job does not really belong to us in Manhattan alone. Our 250 members are not the only Christians whose duty it is to evangelize a city of eight millions. It's partly your responsibility, too. Yes, this task really belongs to all of us, and now is the time to do it. While we still have our one last chance to build under the old New York City building codes, here is an urgent request of individuals and congregations who desire to help. Will you please send us a letter of commitment as soon as possible, this very day if you can, setting forth the amount you will give toward this objective. This letter of intent will be invaluable to us in obtaining the construction loan. The actual money can be sent any time before the spring of 1963, but we do need that letter of intention right away. Manhattan has a wonderful eldership, one of the finest I have ever known in 30 years as a gospel preacher. Therefore, your investment in the Manhattan program is safe. Moreover, the continued doctrinal soundness of the congregation is assured. And now, will you personally and your congregation help erect the very first building Churches of Christ have ever constructed in New York County, heart of the greatest city in the Western world? We believe and pray that you will help. Time and tide and the restless city wait for no man and for no church. This vast metropolis of significance to all mankind presents a mighty challenge to churches of Christ. No church can be truly worldwide without manifesting strength in this fabulous city. Your help can cause the gospel of Christ to flourish in New York and the whole world. This light of liberty lifted in New York Harbor is seen all over the world. Its beams have reached to the ends of the earth. What a strategic place to lift high the lamp of the gospel of Christ, where the eyes of all the world may see it. On a clear night, 20 million people can see this beacon atop the Empire State Building. Just think, that's over 10% of the people of the United States. There could be no better place on earth than Manhattan to build a powerful and faithful New Testament church. Just as the apostles of Christ moved first to evangelize the great cities of the Roman Empire, your gifts now can enable the truth to flourish in this greatest city in the Western world.